will U.S. troops stay until everyone is out, or will they leave? So I'm not going to comment on hypotheticals. What I'm going to do is stay focused on the task at hand, which is getting as many people out as rapidly as possible, and we will take that day by day. So you can't commit to yes. bringing back every American? Jake, you, there's Jake, a large number. That wasn't a hypothetical. That, that was a question. Joining me now to talk about that and many other things is former counterterrorism officer and host of This Is My Show with Drew Berkowitz. Drew, um, we can't commit to taking out our own citizens. This is a bit of a new policy for America. We've always protected our own citizens. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that has always been the case. Uh, but interesting to hear, I, I was looking at the same clips earlier today. You know, they're trying to stay committed to their timeline, which of course means nothing now with all that's happened there and this just debacle of a, of a pullout. I mean, as we talked about the other day, you literally couldn't have scripted a worse ending to this war. And now they're saying, oh, well, I mean, maybe we'll get to you. Maybe we won't. We want to leave by the 31st. It makes no sense. It's, does, it's a disaster. And they know that the American people see the disaster and watching them try and work their way out of it is, is as comical as it can be in such a dire situation. Okay, uh, Drew, let's, let's, let's do an actual hypothetical here for a moment. All right, Drew and Jesse, we're running the country here. We have bumbled this whole thing up. We yanked all the, all the troops out. We have 10,000 American citizens there. Now we need to get them out. You and I, what are we doing? How do we get them out? Because I understand the Taliban are probably not going to be that welcoming of dropping a bunch of Ranger battalions in. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, that's the problem now is basically you're left with two options and I will get to the answer, I promise. But you're left with the option of, OK, we created this problem. They're already under Taliban rule again. They've got all this territory. They've got all this power. We have this little bit of property at the airport that we're controlling for now so we can let everything else just go to hell or we can do a little bit of a reversal and go back, not like to where we were by any stretch, but do what it takes to finish this right, at least for our people, and ideally our, our Afghan interpreters and, and partners that work with us as well, and then figure out and carry on the rest of your awful plan. But in this scenario, you've got, look, you've got to, you've got to bring back people there. You've got to hold the airport. And they, I, I've heard multiple people too say behind the podium in DC, we're, we're holding the Taliban at their word and believing they're gonna stick to it. It's like, who, who are you, what, what have you been watching? When is the <laughs> Taliban ever Jeez. stuck to their word? They're not sticking to their word now. They never have. It's not in their interest or DNA to do so. But I think you've got to go. You've got to hold the airport. You've got to have air support there. You've got to have all sorts of, of, of a show of force. And then you've got to have special operations teams on the ground going out and helping make sure that these people get back to safety. And you say that we are not leaving like we, like we used to, at least, until you're all accounted for. And I don't think that's... Okay. I, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. But I think th there's got to be a show of force. The, the Taliban respect... Strength, uh, excuse me, strength. So if, if if right now they're seeing weakness, so they're doing whatever they want. But they do fear us. They just don't fear President Biden in the way that we're doing it. Okay, Drew. Most of America right now, I, I would venture to say, 95 percent of this country plus believes the Taliban are right on the cusp of taking over all of Afghanistan, and there's not an opposing force at all. Drew, inform people about the situation on the ground. So that yeah, that's not true at all. Um, it's it's basically basically you know history does does a circle all the time and that's what we're seeing here you know back back before we invaded the northern alliance was was pushing pushing back against the taliban we supported the northern alliance um before 9 11 you had akhman shah Massoud, who was the leader of that who was killed um he was assassinated and his son is now the leader of the new northern alliance they're all geared up they are ready to go in panchu they've been waiting He's been having some meetings. I've talked to sources on the ground. He went to Pakistan, he went to France, he went to a couple other places. People who are saying, look, let's try and figure out how to do a co-share of the government. Taliban gets part, the, you know, the Tajiks and other people get part. And they don't wanna do that because of course, no one wants to coexist with the Taliban. They're horrible people. So they, along with Amrullah Saleh, who, who ran the National Security Directorate, which is their equivalent of the CIA that we, we our government trained. Uh, and we worked with Amrullah for a long, long time. They have partnered up along with several other warlords and saying, no, this isn't gonna happen. We are going to push back. This is going to be our Afghanistan. So it's going to get very, very interesting um, in the coming days and weeks. True, uh, again, not to nerd out on the details, but the, 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 all these people you just described, do they have the ability without a lot of support from us, do they have the ability to take on the Taliban? Do they have the numbers? Do they have the equipment? 
Yeah, they do, so they most certainly do with with a couple things that could come into play and change that. So it, it just in a force on force fight, these are people that we've trained. So a lot of the people that are being accused of, oh, they just dropped their guns and they didn't fight. Well, no, that's not necessarily true in all cases. In fact, most cases, they didn't have the support. They were told, you're not getting more ammo, you're not getting more resources. So they bugged out. Um, but a lot of those people have equipment. They were trained by us. There's some people who I, I will tell you, it's a smaller percentage, but they are really, really good. I uh, know what they're doing and the Taliban are gonna be upset when they come to see him. Um, so there's a lot of people there. They have tons of equipment. They have equipment we've given them. Obviously the Taliban have tons of equipment now too. Um, but I, I think it's it's not just a bunch of villagers. It's some people who know what they're doing and it's it's going to be really, really interesting to see. And it's going to be really, really bloody. Hey, thanks so much for watching The First on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me, like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me.